Making friends, it's Sandy here, and today I have five card ideas to share with you, created with the Hero Arts Tulip Bouquet Stamp and Die Bundle and the Color Layering Tulip Bouquet Stencil. That's a mouthful, right? <laughs> but check out this stencil, it's so cool. This is super fast and fun. It's a great way to add color and shadow to your stamped images, even if you're not the least bit artistic. The colors for the first card, I'm using Shadow Inks and Hero Hues in Fresh Lawn, Tide Pool, Cotton Candy, and Berry Smoothie. You're also going to need some blending brushes. And I'm going to be using my Misty. I'm using the Intense Black Ink to stamp the outline stamp from the uh, Tulip Bouquet stamp set. Giving it a good rub there so I have nice coverage. And I actually take this out and away from my sticky mat. Um, in the next card, I actually did use the sticky mat and just left it on there and it is a great tool because it will also hold down the stencil for you while you're working on it so um, get one of those sticky mats from misty you will really appreciate it okay so i'm starting off adding my color i'm using the solid stencil to begin with and i'm putting down a very very light coating of the cotton candy now i'm switching over to the berry smooth and I'm going to use the same blending tool. I'm just cleaning it off. And I just want to add this darker color to the bottom of the tulips, not all the way over the top. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat this morning. And I've also left the very tips of the top of the tulips white. I really like that contrast. Okay, so I'm peeling off the stencil. Now we're going to bring in the one that just highlights the bottom of the tulips. So this is the second one and uh, it adds the shadow at the bottom. So you know when you color, you go in with your second color and you darken it starting from the bottom. Well, this does it with a blending brush, so it's a lot faster. And it creates beautiful results. Here we go. Check that out. Woohoo! So I'm just going to add a tiny little bit more at the bottom and just get a little bit more depth going on with that color. Isn't that beautiful? I love how this turned out. Okay, next I am going to grab two of the greens. I'm going to start with the light one. And I'm also, again, taking the solid stencil. And this is going to color all of the leaves and stems for me all at the same time. So taping that down. And again, if you have a misty sticky mat, they work really good for this technique. And I'm using painter's tape to hold this down. And I'm also working on top of my lovely white glass mat. Love this thing. And there will be a link at the bottom of my blog post for how you can get one. I love that if I have color all over it, I can actually see it. And I'm not staining the back of my art piece while I'm working on it. Plus it's bright and cheery. Okay, so I'm again using a blending tool and I don't have a whole set of Hero Arts ones yet. So uh, those were from Simon Says Stamps. Now I'm switching over to the darker green, the Tide Pool. And I'm adding the highlight stencil in this time. And again, this is going to add the shadows. And I went with a little bit of a blue color on purpose. I kind of like this color combination. And for what I'm going to do with this card, it's going to look really nice on the background. We're going to do a special technique on the background for this. And this is just the art piece that will go over top. So planning ahead a little bit with my colors. So again, just lightly adding, and uh, I'm using a small blending brush this time just to get into all those nooks and crannies. And I decided that green is a little bit on the bright side, so what I'm doing is I'm bringing back in the solid stencil that is for the whole background and just adding a little bit of that blue ink over top of the green just to dull it up a little bit and add a little blue to it because it was a yellow green and I'm using a blue green for the second layer and uh, it just didn't sit right with me, you know? Sometimes you get that way. There you go. So we're finished with this and now we're going to take the coordinating die, the Tulip Bouquet Frame Cut, and I'm going to tape it down on top of this and then I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine. And one tip here, take that little centerpiece out. That is for all the little bugs in the stamp set and you don't want it cutting out your tulips, okay? So remove that before you start die cutting. Okay, there we go, it's all die cut and I'm just popping it out. We're ready for the next step. 
For the background, I'm going to do an embossed resist technique. So I'm starting by stamping the script bold print background. This also is from Hero Arts and it's a rubber stamp. Don't you just love those? So you have to take the black mat out of your Misty so that uh, this nice thick stamp will fit into your Misty. And I'm inking it up really well with uh, Versamark ink. And then I'm going to lay my background piece right over top of it and give it a good rub. And that's going to transfer all that cool writing onto uh, my card front, which I am then going to cover with white embossing powder and I'm going to heat set it. You could also do this step with clear embossing powder if you wanted to, because we're on white paper, so it's still going to show through as white. Okay, now I want a sentiment. So let's get that out of the way while we have the Misty out. I am using an anti-static tool on some black cardstock, a little scrap that I had sitting there, and my embossing ink. I'm going to stamp it a couple of times because I haven't used this stamp yet, so it's brand new. It hasn't really been broken in. So I want to make sure that I have good coverage. And again, I'm using the white embossing powder. It looks nice and crisp on black and it really is going to pop with the background that we're making. So there it is. I uh, fussy cut it out and let's move on to the background technique. So again, I'm using the two greens that I used for the tulips and I'm starting at the bottom with Tide Pool and I'm just ink blending right over top of my embossing because it's going to resist it. So it's going to make that white lettering pop up from the green background. And now you see why I love my white mat? You can see where the ink is. And you can actually come back and pick it up, which I do in a couple of minutes. I'm just kind of getting the base coat on there, trying to get as many of those white spots cleared off. And I don't want all of the white spots cleared off. So you'll notice that I don't work on getting this really, really smooth um, because I'm going to ink splatter over it anyway. And I kind of like the different degrees of depth of the ink in the background. I think it looks really pretty. Okay, so I'm going around the top of the outside edge with the darker green, the Tide Pool, and I've got fresh lawn at the top. And see how easy that wipes up? Just grab a rag and off you go. I'm going to use my Gamsatanzi inks and I'm using the gold and I'm just building that up so that it is watered down enough so that it will splatter for me. And again, I can do that right on top of my uh, glass mat as well. I like to take a practice sheet here and protect my work surface just to make sure I got the right size splatter before I get crazy and go at it. And I'm splattering a little bit over the tulips as well just so that they don't look out of place. And I'm going to use my white paint. I like to just give it a shake, take the spray out and use that end of the nozzle just to add a little bit of white splatter as well. And so to clean this up, just spritz it, wipe it with a towel and you're good to go. And I'm adding a little bit of tape to the back of this dry piece. So I waited for the splatter to dry before I did this. Um, and then I'll show you how I like to add my scoring tool to help me line up adding this to the front of a top folding A2 card. So remove all the protective covers from your tape, line your base up in that top left hand corner, and then use it to lay your card surface down. Perfect every time. Okay, so a couple final steps. I've got some uh, foam squares cut up on the back of my sentiment and my art piece. I'm adding my sentiment first and then I'm angled my art piece in there over top. Isn't that pretty? It's a nice easy card, but it's got a nice pretty background. Okay, now I have four additional samples to share with you. Here is my rainbow card. This is basically a single layer card and I went through a variety of different colors to add this. And I used the same color. I didn't use two blues, two greens. I used one and just did two layers of ink. For the second card, I did a fancy background using the stencil scroll work and I embossing paste through it onto some pebble cardstock to get that beautiful background. And there's what I used, the Hero Paste, and just put it on with a knife, 
spread it nice and even and you get that beautiful background and then cotton candy fog and forever green are the inks that i used for my art piece for this one okay for this one i did a tone on tone stamped background with the tulip stamp so i used lemon drop ink and i stamped on canary before attaching it to white and then i die cut the looking glass ornate frame twice glued them together and attached that to the card front um, and just stuck the little tulips in underneath the frame before I glued it down. This is a really quick and easy card. I used an A2 mask for the background, this one here, and then the ink blending brush and a green and blue, so blue Hawaii and green uh, key lime fizz is what I used actually, um, and did that before adding the art piece to the front. And to add a little bit of detail, I wrapped the stems with a little bit of jute. I hope you enjoyed today's card share. And if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. And you can use the link underneath this video to pop over to my blog to get all of the details and links to all of the supplies I used today as well. Thanks so much for stopping in. Toodles.